Welcome to the U.S. Defense Line channel. Kremlin was angry at the advance of Ukrainian army in Kherson region. Moscow government sent Russian soldiers to Kherson. Many soldiers are coming to defend the city. Defensive lines resumed in Kherson. Russian authorities in Kherson began to create a regional defense unit on the territory of Kherson due to Ukrainian offensive. It was stated that anyone who decides to stay on territory of Kherson and on the right bank of Dnieper will be able to join regional defense units. After Putin declared an extraordinary people in the region, it became clear that the people living in region could be local defense units of region. However, local news sources revealed that no one joined the newly formed defense units by Russian authorities and that everyone left region. Siege of Kursan is also expected to begin in the coming days. Russian officials stated that the evacuation of 60,000 of people continues. Because of this situation, Ukrainian army continues its preparations outside the city. There is also information that a large number of HIMARS systems came to the region. While the preparations for the siege of the city of Kursan continue, fierce clashes continue in Donetsk region. In clashes in Donetsk, Ukrainian army continues to advance. As a result of the clashes, it turned out that Russian military commander Pegov was wounded near Donetsk. Russian army in the direction of Gorlovsky was ambushed in region. Ukrainian army surrounded Russian army and launched a fierce attack. Pegov was also behind soldiers fleeing region as a result of clashes. In more detailed information that emerged, Ukrainian army raided a very large convoy of military vehicles. It is estimated that so-called Donetsk ruler of Russia was also present in this raid. The exact situation of Donetsk official after raid is unknown. Ukrainian air force also attacked Donetsk region. As a result of attacks, so-called senior Donetsk officials of Russia were shot. Russian dominance in Donetsk region began to decline. Russian officials began to flee area. It turned out that Russia will begin to send a large number of extra soldiers to region as situation in Ukraine is getting worse. A former Russian diplomat stated that Russian President Vladimir Putin would sacrifice 10 to 20 million Russian soldiers to win war in Ukraine. Boris Bindarev, Russia's former permanent representative to United Nations, claimed that winning war had become a matter of survival for Putin. It has been alleged that if Russia loses the war with Ukraine, it will be end of Putin. Putin will bring more than 20 million Russians to front in war he has made a matter of principle. For Putin, this is now a matter of political life. Against this situation, Kiev government took a new decision. Ukraine, which has recruited more than a million people, has launched the eighth mobilization wave to make up for its losses. Ukraine, which has recruited more than a million men with seven mobilization waves since February 24th, press button to compensate for the losses it suffered after two months of counter-offensive operations. Ukrainian army announced that every man under the age of 60 who can hold a gun is included in scope of the mobilization. Main aim of Ukrainian army right now is that it wants to retake all regions, including Crimea annexed by Russia, and it will not stop until it gets its lands back. Ukraine also stated that they will no longer accept all peace plans. Kiev government is making big plans to regain the lost lands. In the past weeks, Zelensky has given orders for entire operation. Ukraine has now launched a major offensive with a force of one million soldiers. It cannot be estimated how many soldiers Russian army is currently fighting in region. However, Ukrainian army is now more and more crowded in region. On the other hand, planned power cuts began in Kyiv after Russia hit Ukraine's energy infrastructure. Ukraine lost energy infrastructure facilities across country with Russian missile attack. After the loss in Ukraine, planned power cuts for energy conservation began. Ukraine's largest energy company stated that it has started power cuts in capital and surrounding regions. Ukraine's energy company is now starting to repair the damage in the region. That's why it was announced that there was a power cut in the region. President Zelensky made statements about power outages. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said that the whole world should now react sharply to Russia stating that his country has now returned to normal life. Zelensky argued that Russia is a great threat not only to them but also for every country. While heavy clashes continued in region, President of Ukraine Vladimir Zelensky gave information about the course of the war. Zelensky stated that Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu had phone calls with defense ministers of some countries and discussed nuclear threat. Expressing that no one believes in Russia today, Zelensky said it was Russia that caused events related to the radiation disaster at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant.
This was seen on Russian missiles, especially on Ukrainian nuclear facilities. Zelensky stated that Russian forces may lay mines on Kakova Dam in Kherson region they control. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who was connected live to conference of Israel's media organ Haaretz, made harsh criticisms of the country. On the other hand, Zelensky said that Moscow can support Tehran's nuclear program in exchange for the aid of armed drones to Russia in Iran's Ukraine war. Zelensky, who who attended the conference with live video, criticized Israel's neutrality in Ukraine war. Zelensky also explained that Russia fired about 4,500 missiles at Ukraine and missile stocks were decreasing, so he found them in Iran in search of affordable weapons. Ukrainian intelligence announced that Russia ordered about 2,750 kamikaze drones from Iran. The president also stated that no money was given to weapons supplied by Iran. In return for these aids, Russia will assist Iran's nuclear project. Zelensky also touched upon the air defense systems they demanded from Israel. Zelensky, who called for arms aid to Israel, also announced that Russia's presence in Syria has decreased thanks to defense of Ukraine. That's why Ukraine asked Israel for a defense system. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz stated that they cannot grant Kiev's requests at the moment due to operational restrictions. However, Israel has indicated that they can provide an early warning system. These systems, which can detect a possible attack in advance, can work very well for defense of Ukraine. With the recent increase in Israel's cooperation with United States and Western countries, it is also clear that it is on good terms with Russia. Thanks to the military coordination of Israel with Moscow, Iranian targets were hit. The connection between these two countries has never been resolved. But throughout Ukrainian war, Israel did did not send its military equipment to aid. However, with the outbreak of Ukraine war, the disagreements between Russia and the West put Israel in a difficult position. After Russia's attack on Ukraine, Israeli government initially avoided statements that directly targeted Russia, calling for a ceasefire and peace. Statements were made from Tel Aviv that only humanitarian aid was sent to Ukraine. While the former Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett, made a statement on Ukraine war, then Foreign Minister Yair Lapid drew attention with his statements blaming and condemning Russia. Tel Aviv administration awaits the current elections. It is stated that the world's best air defense system can be sent to Ukraine after the elections. We have come to the end of another video. You can support us by liking the video. By subscribing, you can easily follow new videos. I wish you all happy days. See you.